Well, welcome to today's daily service. I'm really glad that you could tune in and join us today. I hope that you're well. I'd like to open our service today with some words from Psalm 89. Would you just sit back and take them in as I read them and as they come up on the screen? Just a few verses. The heavens praise your wonders, Lord, your faithfulness too, in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies above can compare with the Lord, who is like the Lord among the heavenly beings? In the council of the holy ones, God is greatly feared. He is more awesome than all who surround him. Who is like you, Lord God Almighty? You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds you. You rule over the surging sea, and when its waves mount up, you still them. Let's respond to those words with these words we're about to say together, which are designed to help us respond to what we've just heard. I'll say the parts which say, Leader, would you join in on those which say, All. Who is like the Lord? There is no one like him. He rules the raging sea. He tames the mighty waves. The heavens are his. The earth is his. And all that live upon the earth are his. Who is like the Lord? There is no one like him. His scepter is righteousness. His throne is justice. His heralds are love and faithfulness. Happy are those who come to praise the Lord. They will walk in the light of his presence. Let's pray. Father, happy are those who come to praise you. We worship you as the one who is over all and rules through all. We worship you and praise you. Thank you for your presence with us here today. We acknowledge that you are here. Make us attentive to your word to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a prayer of confession, acknowledging the ways that we haven't walked in the light of his presence. A chance for us to come before God and to say, here I am, I'm sorry, and I want to walk fresh and clean in your sight. Cleanse me uh, through faith in Jesus. Let's pray this prayer of confession together. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have turned against you, ignoring you and resisting your will for our lives. We have been stubborn and rebellious, but you are merciful and kind. For the sake of your Son, who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us, and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you in every way. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, having come before God and having confessed our sins to him through Christ and if we know him, having already experienced his forgiveness and the application of the blood of Christ to us by the Holy Spirit, we hear now his word in freedom of faith and conscience. We're looking this week at Ephesians chapter 6, which tells of a great cosmic battle in which we as Christians are enjoined battles against principalities and powers of dark origin in the heavenly realms. And Paul's spoken about the armor of God, and now he's exhorting regarding prayer. So let's take up again Ephesians 6 verses 18 through 20. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given me, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. We're focusing today on those last two verses, verses 19 and 20. Have them open in a Bible near you. Two things I want us to take away. 
First, praying for our leaders. The Apostle Paul is in prison. He's in prison for the gospel, an ambassador for Christ in chains. And he asks the Ephesian church to pray for him. Did you notice? Verse 19, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. We need to be reminded to be praying for our pastors and leaders who regularly have the responsibility of opening God's word to people and teaching them uh, the word of God as it points to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that work isn't going to be effective if we're not surrounded in prayer, we who teach regularly the Word of God, leaders in the church, desperately need the prayers of God's people. If the great Apostle Paul needed uh, people he was ministering to, to be praying for him, that he might know boldness in sharing the, the mystery of the gospel, how much more we uh, lowly pastors and teachers today Please pray for us. And notice that word mystery, that we might have words to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, sometimes the Bible speaks about the mystery uh, of God in, in kind of the sense of him being imponderable. We think of uh, Isaiah chapter 55, those opening verses where the Lord says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. That sense of mystery that if we were to uh, kind of somehow get a glimpse of the internal life of God, our breath would be taken away and we couldn't comprehend all that's there to be seen. Mystery in that kind of wonderful, imponderable, overwhelming sense. But here, the Bible is speaking about mystery in a different way. Mystery is that which was once concealed, but has now been revealed. If you flip back in your Bible just a page to Ephesians chapter 3, hear these words of the Apostle and listen to how he's speaking about mystery. Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is, the mystery made known to me by revelation as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to people in other generations, as it's now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise in Christ Jesus. Mystery in the sense of something that which was once concealed, but is now in the fullness of time disclosed by God for us to understand. That he's not just seeking a people amidst Israel, but through Israel, gathering in a people for himself from every tribe, tongue and nation. We need help to explain that mystery of the gospel to those around. Pray for us who are leaders. And let us secondly also pray for ourselves. Let's look at verse uh, uh, 20. Paul says, For which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. First to focus on leaders. But I think by implication we can pray this prayer, each of us, as a Christian person. Think of Paul there in chains. He's writing from prison. And even in that horrendous circumstance, he's got his eyes out looking for opportunities to share Jesus. Often I can feel, well, I have this happening in my life or that pressure is, is, is upon my shoulders. So I'll therefore kind of just think, well, I've got to get through that first and then I'll have opportunity to share Jesus as fully as I'd like to. Notice that Paul's looking for opportunities to share Christ, even amidst his chains, even amidst horrible circumstances. And notice also that he's asking for fearlessness. And as we kind of mirror read that statement, we can deduce that he asks for prayer for that, 
precisely because the great apostle struggled with timidity and fear, just as we do when it comes to sharing the gospel of Jesus with those who may not be open or immediately warm to the prospect, prospect of speaking about him. He needed prayer to be bold in sharing Jesus, just like we do. So if you feel timid, if you feel like now's maybe not the best time to have a mindset of evangelism, know that you're not alone. The Apostle Paul needed prayer to, 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 to share with the gospel, even amidst chains, even amidst difficult circumstances. He needed prayer also to be fearless in sharing Jesus, just like we need that prayer. Why don't we pause for a minute to pray now before we sing. Father, we thank you for this challenge to be praying for our leaders. We think of our rector, Vaughan, here at St. Ebbs, and for his week after week faithful ministry of the word. We can almost take that faithfulness for granted. Forgive us for when we do that. We pray for him and all those who teach your word in, in our circle of influence. Please, Lord, would you grant that they might have the words, the energy, the power they need to fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. And we pray for ourselves. Father, we pause to think of our immediate circumstance. Please, would you bring to mind those for whom you want us to be praying that they might come to know Christ. Lord, would you give us opportunity? Would you help us to seize the opportunity to share Jesus with them? Give us the words. Give us the fearlessness. We ask this, that Jesus might be glorified more in our lives. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, let's sing together now.
Well, thanks so much for joining today. Why don't we close our service with the words of the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.